as the architect for the project, I'm always involved throughout construction. And I think this is a place where architects undersell the value of their services. It's just one of the best ways to avoid surprises, keep the lines of communication open between the tradespeople who are acting as your hands to realize your, your ideas on paper into physical reality. Visiting the site will make you a better architect, I promise. You learn to appreciate the sequence of construction, how materials and joints come together, the scale of the spaces you designed, and just the amount of physical labor that it requires to make architecture. Uh, I've never left a, a site visit without having learned something. Before I head out, I always want to have an organized plan for the visit because the job site can be a really busy place and this just ensures I don't forget anything. And I use Notion for this because it syncs with all my devices in real time. So you can see here in the project template in Notion, I've set up pre-populated customized checklists for each phase of the work. And my general rule for this is if I know I'm going to be doing something more than once, I'll make a template for it so it just becomes a repeatable process in the business. So I generally have two bags that I carry with me. The backpack, that's always gonna come with me. That holds all the essentials. And I'll bring along the tote if I have any bulky or difficult to pack items. Start with the backpack. This one from Lowepro, this is my current favorite. At 45 liters, it's definitely not a small bag, but it hits that perfect sweet spot for me. It's large enough to fit a few extras, but not so large that I can bring all the gear I own. So it sort of forces me to make some strategic choices. So it has this clean, low profile, semi-rigid exterior shell, and it's covered in this molly webbing, which gives it kind of a tactical feel. And I picked up a bag of these little plastic molly clips for a few dollars, and I use those just to fasten things to that webbing as needed. Webbing's also a good place to clip on a carabiner or slide in a flashlight. Remember, most of the time, you'll be inspecting spaces that don't have permanent lighting installed, so a flashlight comes in handy. The other nice feature is this built-in rain cover. This just tucks into the bottom, takes up no space in the bag, and it just keeps everything dry in a rainstorm. Two small flanking pockets round out the outside of the bag. Enough room for a wallet and ferry tickets on one side, and my car keys on the other. Most of what I'm carrying with me isn't camera gear. But the reason I like camera bags is because of the padded interior dividers that I can easily change to suit whatever it is that I'm carrying. So for site visits, I like having all of these separate compartments, just keeps things organized and protected. And then for say leisure travel, I can set it up to carry some camera gear and then add in a few tech pouches and some personal items. And in that sense, it makes a really great carry on day pack. The clamshell design is especially nice for site visits where things are pretty dirty. So you can set the pack down on the rear of the pack and then as you open it, the back panel stays clean. So I have three cameras in here that travel with me. The Canon EOS R has been my go-to camera for a few years now and mounted to that is usually a wide angle zoom lens. And this one is the 16 to 35. This allows me to capture most of the spaces I encounter on a typical job site, you know, from very tight interiors to these broad exterior facade shots. I also have room in here to carry one extra lens, and usually that's the 100 millimeter macro lens, and that just fits perfectly in here. Between the two, this combination provides pretty good coverage for most of the work that I do. Now this may seem like overkill if you have a camera on your phone or you have an iPad with you already, but photography and videography are meta skills that I found personally really rewarding. And they're just another dimension to my practice as an architect. And the quality of the photos and the videos that I can get from this setup matches the quality of work that I want more of in my studio. I've recently added a 360 camera to my kit, and this is the Insta360 ONE X2. And I can set it up in the center of a space, connect it up to my iPad, and in just a few seconds, I have a record of progress for an entire space. So it's been a huge time saver. I've also been using this to record memos. As I'm walking through a space, I'll point things out, I'll make notes for myself. And because the videos can be recomposed later in post, I can view areas that say maybe I missed, or I can export them, send them to the client for discussion or just kind of general progress updates. And the last camera in here is the drone. I'm still using the Gen 1 Mavic Pro, still serving me well. I use it to inspect hard to reach places. I use it for surveying views, mapping terrain, and generally documenting site progress. And it's especially nice for social posts and marketing.
so these photos, these videos, they're invaluable resources and I'll often refer back to them as I'm writing my field report when I'm back in the studio or say I'm reviewing a payment requisition to verify the stage of completion of the work. I'm always glad to have these visual reminders of everything that's behind the wall finishes once they're covered up. You know, you can refer back to these and see if there's blocking in place, look for plumbing runs, look for gas lines, verify that the things you thought were in place are actually there. The sleeve here fits up to a 15 inch laptop and I'll usually bring that if I'm going on a longer trip. But for site visits, the 11 inch iPad Pro, that really serves as my daily driver. And with the camera and Procreate, I can just snap photos of a detail I want to work out and I can use them to work that through with the contractor in real time on site. I'm also using Notion to run through all the meeting checklists and of course I'm going to keep all of the updated drawings, specs and schedules there too. It's incredible how much space the iPad has actually freed up in my back. I always have a sketchbook with me. This one is the brand new Trace sketchbook, steno format, A5 size, vellum pages, really great for iterating ideas. Especially when I'm traveling, I really do prefer to use a physical sketchbook. I treat it kind of like a travel diary and sketching is just a skill I'm always working on. Next up, we have a 25 foot tape measure and also a roll of painter's tape. These two are essential. I use them for dimension checks, for testing layouts and marking areas that need follow-up. Leave little love notes for your subcontractors. I can't tell you how many times meeting with a client that I've taped out a seating arrangement on the floor, or I'm testing various shelving heights with painter's tape on the wall or marking out a TV size. It's just a really helpful set of tools to have with you. And you'll notice on the tape measure and a few other items in here that I printed up a few sheets of stickers with my business name on them and I just use them to tag my gear and that just helps to make sure they find their way back to my bag at the end of the day. To keep things connected and charged I have a solar battery charger and this has ports for all my devices and I also keep a tech pouch in here just keeps all the cables organized and you'll see I have a little SD card reader in there for my iPad as well. This small Pelican case has all my SD cards. And it's always nice to have a few extra batteries for the drone and the camera. And these take two slots in the bag. Just a few personal items in here, some sunscreen, a handkerchief, and it may seem a little bit vain or silly, but I really do like these face wipes. So if you're out on site all day, long day, traveling, meeting with potential clients, these really do help take the shine off your forehead. Highly recommend these. In the top pouch here, I keep things that I need quick access to while I'm on the go. So I have my canvas pencil case by Bellroy. That has a few of my favorite pens and pencils, has a scale in there. I also keep my reading glasses because I'm getting old and uh, just a few salves. The tiny pouch here was made for SD cards, but I slipped an AirTag in there. This way, if I leave the bag behind or someone walks away with it, I receive a notification on my phone right away and I can track it down. So moving on to the tote, this is the Camino 35 by Yeti. This is a massive upgrade from the old canvas LL Bean one that I had been using. Large compartment here has a zippered pocket on each side and two pop out pockets at each end. And much like the camera bag, I really like the organization that this affords me. So the bottom is this molded EVA material, which means it can stand on its own. So it makes it really easy to load and unload. And the puncture resistant shell is ultra rugged. I think they say it's load rated to something like 1500 pounds, which is just crazy. They've thought of all the details. So there's webbing on the exterior. You can clip things on and off of that. And they've even thought of details like this little closure hook to keep the larger items from flopping around on the top. These intermediate crossbars give you this really comfortable carrying position, especially with a heavier load. It does come with a hefty price tag, so you may want to mark it as your own. I've made a little Velcro backed nameplate for mine. I know there are Etsy shops that are solely dedicated to selling embroidered badges for Yeti bags. Honestly, I use this bag more than I ever thought I would. You know, most often I'm carrying material samples, carrying reference books or catalogs to and from the job site. But I also use it for car camping, I use it for the beach, kayaking trips, and the size just perfectly complements the backpack and gives me that little additional overflow space for my tripod and even a little bit of food and drink. You'll find links to everything along with a few bonus extras in the blog post linked in the description below. We'll see you again next time. Cheers, my friends.